take these UVs in the flat version and copy them into the polygon version, now I'm going to have the flat, my polys will all flatten out in the viewport and they'll look just like they were a minute ago, right? But if you have something, let's say that you want to cylindrically map ahead and then throw that in the polygon channel, now you can copy, you know, cut the ears off, flatten them, melt them, relax them, do whatever modifiers you've got, sew them back on there with your polygon tools and then copy all that stuff back into the UVs. So, you know, your UV tools can expand by using uh, techniques like this. Um, in this case, now I've got my UV unwrap on there and I've, I've kind of rearranged this body. We will uh, convert this back to an edible poly and collapse all those changes in there. And then I'm just going to reattach his head and everything. And these parts have already been mapped. If we come into his seams, we've kept our selection and uh, we'll just go in and do a weld. That hole wasn't there when he was modeled. That, that crack was not there when he was modeled. So, uh, so we're not actually losing anything by, uh, by doing this weld here. And um, so we just kind of adjust this until we get something that we like. And we'll say apply. So he looks pretty welded. And if we come back into UV Unwrap, now you see that we have his whole model, you know, with all his pockets and his head and all that kind of stuff. If I want to come in here and do a pack, I'm going to get something that looks like this. Now, obviously, this is not what I want. One thing that, uh, that you might want to do with pack is change its defaults. So come in here to recursive. I'm going to put this back up here. And we'll just do another pack here. This is actually, I didn't actually save that as my defaults, did I? So recursive is what you want. That usually does a better job. And we'll pack this up. I don't think I had my spacing set correctly. But anyway, I'm not going to do it again. But you can see um, that you can kind of fill out your scene. And now I can come in and rotate this around and, and um, you know, make my adjustments however I want them to be. And I've got all of his shoes and everything already unfolded here. And this is his head. And uh, I'm just going to grab his, uh, his head in this file. And we're just going to do uh, a few things to it. One thing that we, we briefly went into a few minutes ago was the W space. So um, if we come in to, let's just grab his face here. And I'm just going to select by element and grab this. And I'm going to go into the viewport here. And we're just going to align the, the mapping gizmo here. And we'll do a planar map. And we're going to get his head here from the side. What I'm going to do here from the side is, um, is I'm going to show you what's going on with W space. So first, let's zero those out. And we'll go in here and look at these. And you see what it's looking like from the top. This is, uh, this is sort of like his, his front view of his mapping coordinates. And if we were to pop these into a polygon channel, it would look just like this. It would look like a you know, three-dimensional object. Well, uh, the thing that's important with UVs is that you know, the W is not such a big deal. All we're really concerned about is the U and the V. So as we're looking at the map, if there's a map behind him, it really just matters what's going on here. Now I can come into my W space and I can grab, uh, you know, my faces here. Let's just grab some of these faces. And this guy is not completely symmetrical. But I'm just going to say uh, detach edge verts. And we're going to come back in here. And now I actually have a, uh, two models. I have, uh, well, two UVs, one on top of the other. I've got, um, I've got the two and they stack around on top of the other. So a lot of times you'll be doing this for hands. Or, uh, or maybe even ears or things like that that are symmetrical on your model that are sharing the same map. And you just stack them one on top of the, uh, one on top of the other in the UVs. And that's fine, you know, because, uh, because everything looks, looks good that way. Except for when you're using normal maps. When you're using normal maps, you're going to, or, you know, any other kind of uh, real-time lighting, you're going to see uh, some differences. If you're baking in your light maps, whatever. You're going to see differences here in... Um, in the way that the lighting is from one, let's say, hand to the other. One of them is going to be inverted. And it's not very hard for a shader to come in and um, invert those colors and correct the lighting on a mirrored normal map. But you need to know which faces are mirrored. So the shader needs to know that. So one thing that's um, a good idea is to come in here and adjust. I'm just going to lock these and I'm going to 
flatten my zero value here for that one. And then I'm going to come in here and flatten my zero value here for that one. And um, now I'm going to move this, this one right here, which is one half of his head. I'm going to move it in here to have a negative W value. So if we go back into our U space here, UV space, everything looks the same on the diffuse map, but one half of all of the mirrored faces have negative W values. And the shader could very easily know that, and then you could translate back and forth between your, um, between your mirrored uh, normal maps, convert, invert them on mirrored faces, or so, so, so and so and so and so. So that's, uh, that's all up to the shader. But one thing that a lot of people underestimate is that this W value is in every vert. Every, you know, every vert on your whole model. It's there. It's zero most of the time, but it's there and it's wasted. Every part of the W value could mean something to your engine and you can, the artist can totally set it up and control it and it's not complicated. Everyone knows how to use uh, the UV unwrap mod uh, modifier. So, um, so take advantage of that and you know, put data in there and use it.